Welcome back to Carl Bodmer Live here at the National Museum of Wildlife Art in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I'm taking you on an adventure that I took nearly 200 years ago in four segments. And the first two segments were all about my adventure through wild western North America and back to Europe. The third segment was all about taking this information and turning it into a saleable form called the Atlas. Now this fourth segment is about taking this utter financial failure and turning it into the modern day masterpiece that it is today. Now, upon returning to Europe, I continued working, but I never really found any actual success as an artist. I returned to Europe and, and spent 20 years as a salon artist, painting life-size images of animals and landscape artistry, but real fame completely eluded me. I, I blamed the, the project of the Atlas completely for my failure. I wrote to Max in 1856 saying that this project did great damage to my career that I will never again be able to recoup or recover. So I kept hoofing it and kept making my art and, and in 1893, at the age of 84, I died embittered, alone, and broke. And today, most of Bodmer's work is stationed at the Jocelyn Museum in Omaha. But how did it go from this failure of a project to the amazing world-renowned masterpiece that it is today? Well, funny you should ask. Did a little research before coming in. It seems in 1906, a photomechanical facsimile was produced as part of Reuben Goldthwaite's early Western travels. In 1921, the Vita State authorized prints entitled it Reprints of Rare Americana. In 1948, finally, a large part of these works were discovered at the New Vita State by German anthropologist Joseph Roeder. In 1953 to 1955, a group of these watercolors toured the U.S. sponsored by the Smithsonian and Newberry Library. In 1961, Nodler exhibited these works at Jocelyn. So we're finally getting somewhere. In 1962, Northern Natural Gas of Omaha, later to become known as Enron, acquired the collection and loaned it to the Jocelyn. In 1986, this loan became a gift. So a majority of these works are at the Jocelyn Museum, with approximately 40 drawings and watercolors at the Newberry Library, and a variety of others just kind of randomly scattered throughout. But few full sets of this atlas still exist today. So in 1988, Electo Historical Editions teamed up with Jocelyn to reprint 125 new copies numbered copies of this atlas. And they printed it in the exact same way that we printed it nearly 200 years ago. Now granted they had to clean off a little bit of dust, but then they printed it out using pure pigment and linseed oil for the ink, rubbing it on nice and thick, printing it through, and then having to re-ink in between each of these applications. They then took these final prints and hand colored each and every one of them to match the coloring that we did 200 years ago. So, these prints that we have for this atlas are still considered some of the most painstakingly accurate portrayals of the, the Indians of this time and these cultures. And they're still used by many of these cultures to, to go back and historically remember what it was like to be their ancestors. So here finally, 200 years later, I have found the fame and fortune that I've been looking for, now when it does me absolutely no good. So from, from postcard explorer to world adventurer, from starry-eyed kid to embittered starving artist, from lifetime failure to world-renowned historic artist, I'm Carl Bodmer. Thank you for joining me. Mm -hmm.